Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes to uh, get everybody on, and at least we'll gather a few folks before I bring the camera down. I've got a lot to show you today, so I need to get busy. Um, of course, it is Valentine's is this Sunday, Valentine's Day, and hey, Beverly, I'm glad you're here with us today. Um, Valentine's Day is a big card sending day and not just for lovers, but for love. And so it is a great time to just send some handmade love in the mail to someone. Hey, Gail, I'm glad you're here. And Jackie and Elaine, we got a good group already gathering. And uh, so, yeah, I just want to encourage everybody here to hand out Valentine's cards, mail Valentine's cards, however you need to get them into the hands of your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, hey, Kathy, uh, your church friends, your school friends, hey, Simone, um, Jackie, it's so good to see you. Um, I know that many of us have really fond memories, hey there, Barb, of sending Valentine's, hey Sarah, when we were kids. And um, I think that one of the things I love about Valentine's Day is it's really, to me, it's for the young and for the young at heart. Hey Veronica, um, it's, just, it's just a time to, that gives us an excuse, I think, to share love. Love is always in season. It doesn't have to just be February, but I do love that Valentine's Day gives us an excuse, I think, to, to share love officially. Hey, Susan, and Susie, I'm glad to hear you got your Valentine's in the mail today, and that is something that today is a really good day to mail your Valentine's, and it's okay if they're not in the mail quite yet, so Valentine's Day is your anniversary, Mary. That's exciting. I think you just, I, I was looking at uh, comments. I think you said 42 years. That's exactly the same time as my husband and I have been married. So, oh yeah, now I can see comments a little bit easier. I got my computer up and going now. So that means that I can go ahead and bring camera down and we will, let's see, get started. Lots to share. Lots and lots to share. So here we go down to the work surface and hopefully we're gonna have a good view and get ready to start some crafting and some sharing and lots of good things. Okay, oh, looks like I need to kind of move down. Okay, I can keep getting this farther and farther away from where I need to be. Not sure why. Um, okay. Well, this will work. This will work. Okay, well, first up, I want to share with you a couple of handmade Valentines I got in the mail from some of my crafty friends. So, this beautiful card is made by one of my team members, and this is from... I own. Uh, she is a an avid crafter. She makes she makes and mails a ton of cards, and she's just I, I love her to pieces. Um, then I got this one from another one of my team members. This is from Kathy Spears. I think she might be on here today. She's oftentimes on here, and I got this one from Gail, who is on here most every week. And I know I got my. I think when I pulled this out of the envelope, I got my, um, my uh, what do you call it, my um, bow a little bit. Isn't that a cute window? Isn't that a cute little window? You guys might remember this little panda bear that was a huge, huge hit from Celebration a couple years ago. I will tell you, I use him quite often on um, grandkid cards. So uh, this uses a lot of the... Um, Ornate Layers dies, beautiful example of that. This uses, um, this is the new um, Valentine set from this year. And I don't know if you can see it, but Ione has put Wink of Stella around all of that pink. And then Gail has used the heart layering heart dies. So super cute, and I will say this is not a Valentine card, but it's another one that Gail sent me in the mail. It's just gorgeous. I will say I love, love this color scheme of, um, 
Bermuda Bay black and white. It's beautiful. It's actually the color scheme I'm going to be using on my bingo. I have a stamping bingo night coming up on the 25th. It's Thursday the 25th. I know it was a little bit of a discrepancy in my initial graphic for that event. I'll give you a sneak peek. Um, this is one of our make and takes. And so you can see, this is my kind of my color scheme here. And um, everybody is going to get this stamp set in their make and take packet. So with bingo, we make cards, we play bingo, we give out prizes, we have a lot of fun. So really fun girls night out. This is one of the celebration stamp sets. So what's cool about this particular bingo set of make and takes is that uh, everybody will have the stamps already. All you'll need to add is just a black ink pad. So um, you'll get all of this in the mail, all these um, that have already been embossed for you. You'll get your balloons punched out and you'll be ready to just stamp and assemble with us after we've played some bingo. And um, I, this, I'm doing it a really different this time. All of my bingo prizes are going to be gift certificates, so you can redeem them for whatever you want. And that way, if you already have something, you're not going to be wondering, you know, if my set of prizes, you already have some of those items. Um, and Susan, yes, welcome. I'm glad you're here, and I think you already registered for bingo, if I recall. So that is that color scheme that's going to be uh, featured. All three of my make and takes are gonna feature variations of this color scheme. So let me show you really quick as well. This is where we were last week at this time. On Teach Me Tuesday, we were looking at making a scene with the donkeys. And of course, we're still, still in, uh, in the midst of our celebration uh, period. Hey Sue, thank you for joining us. This is one of the free stamp sets during celebration, this little uh, donkey. And you know, just for anybody here who maybe has never been through a celebration period with us before, celebration runs through the end of this month only. And during celebration, you can earn free stamps or papers with a $50 purchase. So that is uh, where we were last week. And uh, I think that without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump in to this week. And um, I wanted to show you, I'm gonna actually be casing some cards. Uh, these are the cards that I made for my top five girls that we're gonna be celebrating tonight. And um, so in my team, uh, we have a team meeting tonight on Zoom, and um, I always celebrate the people who have, uh, who have the top five sales that month. And so usually I make them all the same card, and this time I couldn't quite decide. So I did a couple of variations, and all of them feature this vine design, which is what I'm using for my cards with a twist this month. And I'm just really in love with these dies. So I'm gonna case this card for today's, um, today's Teach Me Tuesday. I'm gonna teach you how to use the adhesive sheets with our intricate dies. You can use the adhesive sheets with any dies, but I think they are particularly useful when you have these intricate dies. Now I've shown you before how you can stick these down with a gluey sponge and um, our liquid glue. But I will say the adhesive sheets really make quick work uh, of anything that you have um, running through a die cut machine because it creates a sticker out of any paper at all. So let's see what we can do to remake. I'm gonna use some celebration papers on this. And celebration papers meaning that it's a set of papers you can get for free during celebration. Let me show you which one we're gonna use. It's been a real favorite. I will say, you know, oh, I, I know I digress. Let me show you, here's all four of them. Let me show you really quick so that, um, I'm thorough with what I'm sharing. So these are the four sets of papers. These are samplers that you can get for each of the, um, these are all free during celebration. This one, I will say, was my original favorite, and I do love it, I absolutely love it. You just don't need to do much else when you're using this gorgeous paper. 
And you'll notice on my samplers, I have little cardstock circles, and those just show the various colors that coordinate with this set of papers. Because with Stampin' Up, they always tell us what colors coordinate with designer series papers, and that really helps us to figure out what color schemes we want to use with our cards. So this one was my first favorite. I love it. And then I, this ombre paper is just gorgeous. I mean, what's not to love about this? And this is actually really good for stamping directly on these um, kind of solid pieces. And then the other side has the little circles. This one, I think, has been a bit of a sleeper for me. My initial thought was, yeah, it's pretty. But I was really uh, jazzed by these bright colors and gorgeous flowers. Having said that, I really, really enjoyed designing with these. And that's what I'm going to use today. And then last but not least, there is this set. And this is another set of papers that you can get for free during celebration. And these actually are part of a bundle that you get with a stamp set that coordinates. So all of these are free with a $50 order. This one comes with a stamp set and it's free with a $100 order. Okay, so let's go back to the paper blooms, which is what I'm gonna use for my, my um, case. Now case means that we copy and share everything. So that acronym, C-A-S-E. So we're gonna copy this. And uh, this, I use the art gallery paper on this. And then the other thing that I'm featuring today is this absolutely gorgeous Love You Always uh, foil sheets. Now, if you, t if you uh, purchased my um, new catalog samplers, you got a piece of each one of these. And I do that because I see how that's like a mirror. It's, they are so shiny. Oh, look at that. You can see my... my uh, my uh, uh, phone mount in this. Isn't that funny? These are not like our other foil sheets, which are beautiful in their own right, but these have like a mirror-like quality to them. I mean, the shine is just gorgeous. So I'm using, whoopsie, that today. Um, ay, ay, ay. Um, this is actually the Blushing Bride piece, which is this one here and then there's also the rococo rose piece and then there's also the sahara sand one and i don't have a smaller piece of that cut but i wanted to show you how to use the adhesive sheet with this and we're going to do a little different color scheme so um when you open up your adhesive sheets you get 12 12 sheets and they're all six by 12. And honestly, you can just chop them into smaller pieces and stick them to, to the whatever piece of paper you want. But I know with this piece, I just cut, when I was making these last night, what I did was I just cut this in half and then stuck one of these down to the whole side. And that made it really easy so that then, as I was putting this through the die cutting machine, I already have them ready to go. Now, you'll notice that sometimes when you're running things through a die cutting machine, you'll get some impressions, and you might feel like that that is going to mar the whole piece. Now, if you were cutting a, a solid circle, I would have cut this down to size so that I didn't get those impressions. But the beauty of these intricate dies is you won't see any of that. So, I am going to continue to use the circle, I think. Yeah, we're going to use the circle. And uh, we're going to do a couple of them. And I think that what I'm going to do with this one, this has already got the adhesive sheet on it. One of the things about the adhesive sheets is that they have these little, um, you can see they have seams. And that makes it super easy to peel these off. So let's take this piece and let's just cut that to fit. And I have scissors right in front of me. So I'm just going to cut this to fit and then this 
that's going to turn this piece into a sticker sheet. The nice thing about this is if I'm wondering if this already has adhesive sheet on it, I can just turn it over and I can readily see that the adhesive sheet is there. When I don't have adhesive sheet on there, it's just plain. So you can easily tell. And so that means I could, I could take this and I could just get a whole bunch of these done and then put them in my folder or my file or my container where I keep all of my foil sheets and have them ready to go. Now I will tell you these adhesive sheets are super, super sticky. And um, so they sometimes get a little bit on your hands, but you know, it'll just roll off. And the nice thing is they, when that's super, super sticky, that means that when I run this through my die cutting machine, it is going to really, really stick when I'm done with no glue, no mess, easy peasy. So this is just the protective sheet, so I don't need that. That gets thrown away. Oh, you know what I forgot to bring over here? Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, this I'm going to need. And I'm going to need this come. So when you get, the other thing you like to use when you're using your intricate dies you can get a set of these little um, foam mats along with your brush tip that you can just put on the end of your Picatool. Now you do have to remove, it, it won't go on this end, it has to go on the, on the putty end. So you just take that off and then thread this on quickly and easily. I hope I'm still here. Everybody's gone really quiet. You're probably just watching making sure I'm still here. You know, I probably should not put that in that way. That is gonna end up gashing me, so I think I will take that off. Okay, so now this is ready to, once I run this through, I can just run that like so, and that's gonna help me get all the little bits and pieces off. So let me clear my decks here a little bit and get ready to run my dies through here and I'm actually going to do I think two I think I can get two more out of this piece and then I'll make one of the Rococo rose ones so let's see how we get on bring big boss over here and I know I don't oftentimes do a lot of die cutting on camera that is just my personal preference I don't think you guys necessarily want to just watch me die cutting for no reason. But today, it's part of my Teach Me Tuesday because I'm wanting to show you the beauty of these um, adhesive sheets and why you should use them if you have intricate dies. So I'm just putting my platform here. I need everything on here to do these dies. Just setting everything up. And this is going to go like so, and look how that is going to fit perfectly, and then I still have room for one more. Okay, here we go. I think I'm going to stand because it helps me. I don't know about y'all, but some things just don't work as well when you're sitting down. Okay, so now this is ready to run through here. Look, listen how quiet that is. I mean, it's just super, super quiet. I will say this is having trouble grabbing because this has got laminating on it, lamination, laminating sheet, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to run this back through one more time just to be sure. And if you're ever wondering when you're die cutting, if you have gotten all the way through, my recommendation is to just pull this out and lift it and you can see whether you've gotten really really strong um, looks to me like it's come all the way through pretty readily so I'm just gonna pop that out and I'm going to put Big Boss right here this here and grab my little brush and just rub it up and just roll that over your die 
and it will help you to release all those little pieces. Now, I will tell you that when you add the adhesive sheet, it makes it just a little bit thicker. So because your, um, your paper, it adds like a little layer to it, sometimes it's a little bit, um, you might need a shim. And a shim is just where you put an extra layer of paper, like copy paper, and um, that's gonna help you. So we're gonna pull the rest of those out of there in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna make three cards here, kind of all at once, to show you how easy this is, I think. Oh yeah, look at there. It's a tight fit, but I think, oh yeah. Ooh. I don't know, let's see. I think that might end up cutting off some. So let's let's go to our, this is Rococo Rose. Now I do think that this time, what I'm gonna do for demonstration sake is, why is somebody saying sorry? Marsha, you're saying sorry, I'm not sure why. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'm just, I have this in my desk here. This is where we stay for our retreats. So I'm just gonna pull a couple of pieces, which are already six inches or thereabouts, maybe a little bit less. So now I've added, whoopsie, just a tiny bit of um, thickness that's added to my die. And let's just see if that is going to make a difference. And once again, I'm going to go through once, and then I'm going to reverse and go back through again. I do like to do that with our intricate dies. With Big Boss, you really don't need to do that with your other dies, but I think it's just kind of a good practice when you're doing an intricate die. Now, do you see how that has also protected my paper? You can see the line where my paper ended, but it protects the paper. And it protects it from getting the etchings from your, um, your uh, what do you call them? Uh, you know what I mean? The, oh, look at that. Popped it right out of there. I mean, that is pretty nifty. See those couple of sheets really made a difference for me. And I do like to, um, brush the back side of this so that I don't get the brush marks on the front. You know, it's, again, I'm wanting to protect this mirror finish on here as much as I possibly can. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? I think it's really gorgeous stuff. Um, it's so shiny that to me it is best when you put it through an intricate die like this. So there is the Rococo Rose and there's the Petal Pink. They're calling this Petal Pink, which is very orangey. Uh, there's no two ways about it. It's a very peachy pink. But this to me is almost like a, like a pale copper. Um, okay, one more time. I'm gonna run it through. Two sheets of thin, just note paper. And once again, I am going to run it through twice. Like I said, I don't usually die cut on camera, and today I'm doing three pieces. But we're just going to make three cards all at once. Okay. There we go. I can throw these away. And I will say, um, at my Big Shot station, my die cutting station, over in the main part of my studio, I do keep paper like that in the drawer right under my die cutting machine because I find that then it's just right there. I don't have to hunt for it. Look at that, how it just pops right out. And then I can just cut this off and then it's ready for the next die cutting adventure. And it's up to you whether you wanna hang on to little pieces like this but I could easily cut some small flowers or something out of that. So I would probably put that these two pieces in with my scraps. And then, um, again, when I look at them on the back, I can easily tell that they have adhesive sheet on them. 
Okay, so let me clear this space a little bit and then we will get to putting everything together. Now I do have quite a bit of stuff in here. Let's see if I can pop those out really quickly. You know, when you have these little bits of paper in your uh, dies, they do, uh, they can inhibit the uh, die from cutting all the way through. So it is good to go through there and pop those little babies out. And I try to do that before I put the die away because then the next time I use the die, it's ready to go. I don't want to have to stop and do this um, when my die, you know, when I'm ready to do some more die cutting. So yeah, it just takes a little bit of brushing sometimes, but they are beautiful dies. Again, this is Vine Design is the name of these dies. I think it's a little bit of a sleeper bundle in our spring catalog. Hello from St. Louis. There's Terry Lynn. Welcome, welcome. Okay, Big Boss is being put away. And I am going to brush this off just a little bit get our space a little bit tidier. Let's just brush this a little bit more and then we will start crafting. Let's see, here are the dies. And this is why I do like to have that little bit of um, magnet sheet behind me because it just makes life so simple. This is the coordinating stamp set and I'm just gonna use one of these greetings in the center. And let's just, oh, I'm doing the wrong side. I need to practice what I preach here. So we just get most of those little dots out of there. And if I need to poke through a few more, it won't take much. And I do, I usually keep this in a little container so that I don't have to get them everywhere. But yeah, I was running late getting over here this, this afternoon. So I was just kind of scrambling and throwing all my stuff into a basket quickly. So yeah, this would make a beautiful, um, you could make this into a, uh, a wedding card. You could make this into a fancy birthday card. You could make this into a, into a fancy um, thank you. So a lot of different directions that you can take these dies and all of this beautiful intricacy. To me, they're like lace circles. And they're, I like the fact that you get a circle and you get a, um, an oval and you get a rectangle in the set. Okay, let's put that aside. And we are going to see which of these card bases we're going to use. For which card, I have these. This is Petal Pink, Rococo Rose, and Blushing Bride. And let's get this back over here. Let's get some regular, regular old grid paper. Although this was from a Stampin' Up! event, so it's really bright. Okay, so now we've got some nice little things here. And this is the paper I wanted to use. So, this is where we get to make some choices. I will say the petal pink, this is the only one that has the petal pink in it. So, I'm going to choose the petal pink background uh, card base for that one. And then, we can go with Rococo Rose here. That's a really good, I mean, that's Rococo Rose in there, so that's a really good match. Um, I could go lighter and go with Blushing Bride. Um, I could turn that over and go with more of the navy. So uh, if anybody wants to weigh in on design, I would love to hear from you. And let's see, maybe we could do, ooh, that's kind of interesting too. Well, let's see. I think that's the direction I'm going to go on these three cards. So let's see if we can get a little bone folder action going here. Laura, you like the navy? Okay, let's go. We've got navy here. 
for this one. Navy on Petal Pink. And then maybe we'll go Navy on Blushing Bride. And then maybe we'll go Pink on Pink. What do you think? Let's see. This Rococo Rose is one of our soon-to-be-retired in colors. To me, it's Dusty Rose. And I was in high school in the 70s. Dusty Rose was a very popular color. And that's what it reminds me of. So that's what I'm thinking that we're going to go. And then, ooh, ooh, that's kind of pretty. And then this is the one that's the petal pink. And here again is more Rococo Rose. So uh, what are we thinking? Actually, they call this Blushing Bride, but to me it looks like Rococo Rose. The other way we could go is we could turn this over and go here. That's kind of, I mean, that's just totally changes the look. And Laura, you're right. I think you, you can't go wrong. Um, they're really nifty. Sarah, I'm glad you're here with us as well. Let's just turn, I mean, look at that. They're just, they're lovely. Now I will say, I think I do like this one better though. This, we might just do that because it's just playful. It's just different. I don't know. Or should we go here? Yeah, the navy looks real. It probably uh, shows showcases the dyes better if we go with the navy. Um, I will show you that here. I did, um, and I brought these over here. These coordinate really well with our layering circle dies. If you don't have the layering circles, you definitely want to add this to your collection because look how many punches you would have to have on your shelf. But instead, you get one little sleeve or a couple of uh, magnet sheets and you get all these circles. So you, you really want to have that. Now, you can add the uh, circle or not. So here you can see how I added the circle behind. I thought I left one of these without, but I didn't. Okay, so Susan's liking the circles. I, I'm assuming you mean this. So let's just think about that. And then where are we going to go from there? We could add a little bit of ribbon. This is the Blushing Bride metallic ribbon. And it is part of the collection that goes with this. And you can see how it just, you know, this is the beauty of coordinating products is they just, like, like Laura said before, there's just no bad choices. Now, these are all products that are in the spring catalog, but you could choose $50 of these and then you would get the paper for free. So that's kind of a nice way to go. I wanted to show you as well that I pulled this out, and this is my set of um, Subtles, um, Subtles Collection Designer Series paper, and look how that coordinates so nicely with what I've going, got going here. And I thought about maybe, maybe, let's see, do I have any pink? Maybe I've used all the other pinks out of here. Um, I could pull in, oh, look at there. There's my blushing bride. I could pull in some of this paper to add a little, to add my greeting. So I thought that, my, okay, we've got voting for the circles is in full swing. So the circles, it is. Now I'm gonna add a greeting with Knight of Navy. Um, these are my, these are for my top five girls. And you can see I had a stamp specially made for our team and it says high five. You did it. SSS is our team because we are the Southern Sweet Stampers. So I wanted to, for this card, do something a little bit similar, but a little bit different. And I'm going to use my big boss and I'm going to stamp. A, I'm going to stamp my greeting on these and cut it out with the circle dies. What I need to know from you is, should I put which of these? I don't want to use a long greeting. I want to put a circle in the middle. We're going to go kind of circle, circle with this. So maybe I should do one of each. That might work. Let's do that. So let's bring this. And then I'm going to have to bring my big boss back over here. So let's go with a thank you. 
and let's make this one the thank you over here. The, the one that's got the really solid navy there. Isn't that going to be pretty? I do love stamping directly on designer paper. I don't know what it is. It kind of, it almost like gives me a rush or something. I don't know. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's almost like you've got this gorgeous paper and then you're stamping on it. I don't know. It just kind of has a different, a different feel to me. Um, so there's the thank you. Let's do the happy birthday and Maybe we will do that one over here. I'm so glad that I had all of these little pieces. You know, when you have a piece of designer series paper that big, you gotta just, you know, you gotta hang on to it. That's a nice scrap. So I think the happy birthday is gonna go here. And I think this little fun one with the big circles is the one where we're going to um, use the hello. Because I think that is the most appropriate for just a little hello. And once I get my hello on here, I think I'm going to mount one of my, uh, what do you call them, flowers, one of my flower stamps, and we can tuck that on the inside. Okay. There we go. Now I could just, you know, I could flag those and they would be perfectly fine. So if you didn't have circle dies or circle punches, you could easily do that. But I do have circle punches and I do have circle dies, so it's kind of why not? Again, I really like repeating patterns. I like to see that um, on my on my designs. Now look how this, this paper does not coordinate technically with this stamp set, but look how the little flowers are so similar. So I'm gonna just put both of those on there and we're gonna put those on the inside. Okay, now I need to close up my Knight of Navy ink and ask me how I know to do that. How many times have I drop something into my open ink pad. I will not tell you how many times I've done it. <laughs> but I'm sure you have too. So, I'm not sure we're gonna use the ribbon. We might, we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's, well, I guess I need these here. Let's see which die we need to punch out. Let's see, one, two, oh. Here's my third one over here. And I will say, you know, in my classes, my live classes, I used to always have people making two each of a design because I always feel like if you have everything out, you might as well make more than one because then you have one to send right away and then you have another one for your stash so that when you're scrambling, you have something already there. So let's see if that is, oh, look at there and there. But I think, oh, look at there, it just, okay, so we'll use that one. And then I think I wanna make a little surround for it. So let's find the next one up and we'll put a little navy cardstock around there. Okay, so this is coming along nicely. Let me grab my navy cardstock. That's the one thing I forgot. This is here, and these are here. Let's get Big Boss back over here. And we will whip these out in no time at all. This is the beauty of Big Boss. He's just so compact and easy to roll out. So let's do this. And while we're doing that, it's a tight fit, but I think it'll work. We'll move him over and we'll put that there. And that way we'll get both layers done at once. And this does not have a magnet sheet underneath it, but I don't find that the dies 
you know, they don't, I don't find them shifting on me. Um, if you were concerned, you could always add, you know, a post-it note or some washi tape, but I really don't have an issue with it. So that's ready to go on one card. Isn't that cute? I do like that. Look at there. Whoopsie. You know, I wanted a super tight, let's see. Maybe that's not the one I want. I wanted a really tight fit. Let's go down one and see if that is not a better, let's see. I think I might've gotten one that was too big. I wanted just a, a little peak of navy. I didn't want a huge uh, frame of navy. So let's see what we can get. Yes, Susan, you are right. The mini boss, uh, little boss is what I call uh, the small, the mini cut and emboss machine is super cute and would fit for all of these dies. Oh yeah, that, see, that's what I need right there. Just a little tiny bit. So that is what I'm going to do on the remaining ones for thank you and happy birthday and hello. This is the other thing I love about this stamp set is that it, it is truly an all occasion set, not a holiday set, but it covers pretty much the occasions of your life. There's a congratulations, there's a sympathy, there is a thinking of you, there is a thank you, a birthday, I mean kind of everything you need for your card sending and your card making. And so I think it's a great set for beginners as well as those of us who have crafting as a real way of life for us. It's a, it's a major part of our lives. So I think that um, the font is lovely and the greetings are lovely. And I'm just, yeah, I can't say enough about Vine Design and my high recommendation for it. So that's one of the things, you know, I do a monthly class that I call Cards with a Twist. And I do two each of four designs. So I look for stamp sets that are gonna give me that kind of variety to do two each of four designs. And then I do a little twist with each one. Um, whether it's changing the orientation or the color of cardstock or the designer paper, some little twist to make it a little bit different. And um, so this is one of the things I really look for is versatility and um, a number of different um, greetings that I can use because I want that stamp set to really work for me and really um, have a lot of value and give me a lot of mileage. Okay, so these can be punched through. Oh, that's the big one that I didn't want. Okay. Let us go now. These are ready. This is my extra cardstock. I gotta put this away because that is a dangerous thing to leave out. Ask me how I know. It's because you end up accidentally throwing away a die and you can't get replacement parts. You have to actually <laughs> get the whole thing, which I don't really wanna have to do. One is enough. Okay, now, these I am done with, so now let's start assembling. Now remember, this already has adhesive on it, so let's go with the peachy one first because that one's easy to spot. This is my um, my piece that has that um, that peachy look to it. So let's go here and let's go here. Okay. We're gonna put this down. Now let's see, I will say one other little thing is, do I want this at the top or at the bottom? Hmm, I think I'm gonna have that peachy down there at the bottom. And it's gonna be peeking out behind here. Be oh. <laughs> well now let's just see. Wow, look at that too. I mean, there is that option. It gives a totally different look, but I am going with navy because I've already got my little navy cardstock here. But just saying, you know, it is fun. Betty, I didn't even see you here. I'm glad you like my designs. My little fun, 
fun uh, virtual designing here today, and this is Teach Me Tuesday, and we are working on how to use the adhesive sheets when you are die cutting. So that is stuck down, everything is ready to go. Now watch this because, where did my little pokey thing go? Hmm. Well, I had it right here and now I moved it out of the way. I will revert to my old one. I don't know if any of you guys have this old pokey tool we had for years that is still one of my favorite tools to use. Partly because I'm a creature of habit and I just gravitate. To Once I start using something, it's hard for me sometimes to switch. So all I'm doing here is poking out from here. I've got a few of these little circles that didn't go, didn't come out easily when I brushed these. And that is partly because of the adhesive sheet. Okay. So now all I got to do is figure out somewhere back here there is a start <laughs> because it has those little um, it has those little lines in it. So all I'm going to do is just kind of pull here until I get a piece to start coming up. If I could get it in the light, I can probably see where my little seam is. Hmm. Where is my seam? Where are you? I'm not finding it. Is this the one I didn't? No, there it is. There's my seam. I just found it. Voila. Look at that. It just peels right off. Is that nifty or what? So that, you can see how sticky it is because it's sticking to me and it is sticking to my tool. You use a sewing stiletto. Yeah, exactly. Susie, you know, when I first started stamping, I was using some sewing pieces too because I had a lot of sewing stuff. I did a lot of sewing in my younger years. And um, then I got away from that, but I still had a lot of sewing um, tools and that just seemed to be the easy way to move forward with that. So yeah. So yeah, you can see just how sticky this is. Okay, I've got sticky all the way around. I got lots of sticky. Okay, let's push that aside. Make sure my card is yeah, going in the right direction that I know which way it's opening. Having said that, this is a really easy card to go in portrait or landscape mode. So once you stick it down, and it's not going anywhere. It is down. But I think it's really, really lovely. Now, I'm going to either pop this here or I could go here. So tell me what you think about whether we should go landscape or portrait. And I forgot to think about putting um, any ribbon down. If I'm going to put any ribbon down, it's going to have to go on afterwards. So that is ready to go with a couple of dimensionals. Yeah, it is a little difficult sometimes to find that seam. You're right, Terry. It's, uh, I think it's because it's, it's these, uh, this die is so intricate that finding that little seam. Okay, we've got a vote, two votes for portrait and two for landscape. <laughs> Well, you know what? I think we'll do this one landscape and then we'll do the next one portrait. How's that? So that is gonna go there. I think it's just really lovely as it is. I'm not sure we need anything else. Um, let's try adding a little bit of ribbon and see if we like it or not. Let's see, do we wanna add a little bit of ribbon there? Do we want that or is it just unnecessary? I think it's kind of unnecessary because this is really the star attraction. And I think this goes to show you that, you know, a couple of dies, one little bit of stamping and you're kind of there because it is just such a pretty die and the paper is so pretty. Um, I could even think about doing this. 
But again, I think it's going to be too much. Let's see. Sometimes you can get things just too busy. Well, no, that's actually not bad. What do you guys think? Ooh, you know what? I do have, I didn't bring it over here, but I think I have some baby ribbon. Let me see if that might kind of calm things down a little bit. Let's see. navy ribbon I could add a little bit of this navy twine that kind of adds a different element which is kind of fun because this is all really kind of I think it's kind of a the paper to me is a little bit funky and then the dye is definitely kind of um, glamorous and then I like to I like eclectic if you saw my house you would see what I mean um, we have a lot of antiques, but they're more the modern side of antiques. We like um, we like Art Deco, and we like mid-century modern. And um, but then when you mix that with some other things, and yeah, you get kind of an eclectic look. So let's just see if we want to do. Um, let's see what we think about this. Do we want to do a little bit of navy twine? What do we think? What do we think about that? I think I like it underneath if I'm going to do it. Could do it over here as well. Kind of here, it kind of adds a little bit. So I'll kind of let that sit there and see what y'all think for a minute while we get the next card going. And I think this needs a little bit because the card base is petal pink and this is petal pink. And this is Blushing Bride. I think we needed maybe a little bit more navy in there. So let's think about that. And then while we're thinking about that, I'm going to move over here to our Hello version, our Hello card. And um, okay, we're liking the twine. So let's bring the circles in. This is going to be a fun card. This is going to be a little bit funky, a little bit um, unexpected, which is a fun aspect of design. You know, do the unpredictable. So once again, and I will say, I think on this one, I'm not even going to punch those out because it's not, first of all, it's handmade. And I think second of all, it doesn't even detract. So let's just see if we can a little bit more easily find that seam. Where are you? Oh, look at there. Ha ha. So now I can just pull this. Oh, look at there. Some of these circles are going to end up popping out as I pull the adhesive sheet backing off. It's lifting those with it, which is kind of nifty. That actually saved me a little bit of labor as it were. Look at that, it's lifting them right out. I should have done that the first time. So now I'm at the end of my seam and finding it. Look at that, it lifts them right out. Hmm, who knew? That's kind of a fun, wow. That makes, ha! Huh. Well, I discovered something in the middle of my Teach Me Tuesday. Hmm. Well, well. This is going to go right here. I think it's going to be lovely. Boom. That's got a lot of pizzazz. So let's put this down. And I think that we decided that we like a little bit of navy twine on our thank you card. So you'll notice that I tend to put a fair bit of... Um, number of dimensionals on my circles. I don't like saggy middles. And I find that, uh, I also don't like circles that rock. And I find that if you only put them on the side, sometimes it'll rock on the other bit. So more is more when it comes to dimensionals, in my view. Oh, I do, I do like that. And I think the twine's gonna be super cute on that as well. Oh my, well, this is, a little unexpected because I hadn't really planned on using the navy twine, but I think it's really, and this is the navy twine is part of the well-suited suite 
again, going back to eclectic, I do like to mix and match from different sweets. Again, when you have just such beautiful coordination of colors and designs with Stampin' Up, it allows you to do that. So I think I have just enough room to put a little um, navy twine knot. And I will tell you that somebody gets this in the mail, they, they will know that that is not from Walmart. That was not made in China. Um, nothing gets Walmart or China, but the fact that this is handmade is very apparent, and I like that. Um, it also will mail for a single stamp. I mean, there's not even a hard embellishment on there. It's usually, it really and truly is stamp sink and paper with a little bit of twine. But we did put the we did put the paper through the die cutting machine, and it is fancy paper. It's that beautiful love you always foil. So, um, and then don't forget that this is the Paper Blooms Designer Series paper available for free only. You can't purchase it. It's available for free only through the end of February. So make sure that you're getting your celebration orders in so that you don't miss out. Um, celebration over the last number of years has gone through the end of March, not so this year. It is only through the end of February. So we have to get it done. Handmade the USA, exactly, Terry Lynn. Oh, that's so cute. I'm glad you guys chose that circle because I was gonna go in a totally different direction and I like that a lot. So let's put our third design together and we haven't made too much of this. This one is, I don't know, it's just a little bit um, playful, I think. This one is a little bit funky. This one, I can tell you, is just gonna be elegant. So because of the flowers and everything. So I hope you guys are having fun, because I am. Now we could go this way, and that is awfully pretty, but I think I'm gonna go the other way, our original. I think I'm gonna stick to the original. Judy, I'm glad you like these. They're fun, aren't they? Velma, I'm glad you're liking these. And I mean, I did all the die cutting and everything on camera, and we are still right at an hour. So I'm gonna wrap things up here pretty quick. I don't usually make three cards at once on camera. I definitely don't die cut on camera. And lo and behold, we've got all of that done today. And I did use two different designer series papers because I'm using the, um, uh, this is the Subtles, um, what do you call it? Subtles Collection Designer Series paper. Now again, I'm not gonna pop these little circles out because once I start lifting this, it kind of does it for me. The adhesive sheet just kind of lifts it for me. So let me grab an end of that adhesive sheet. Come on, sweetie. Come on, old girl. Where are you? There it is. There it is right there. So now I'm gonna sweep all of these little tiny pieces off my desk when I'm done. But you know, um, I have a number of trash cans, little waste baskets in my studio. And um, sometimes when people are newly in my studio, they go, wow, you sure have a lot of trash cans. Well, yeah, because I'm sitting at one table. I don't wanna have to get up. I wanna just be able to, uh, I have several workspaces here and wherever I am, I want to be able to easily throw bits and pieces of paper away because we are paper crafters. That means we're gonna have bits of paper. It's what we do. You see how much this is sticking to me? I mean, that is, the adhesive sheets do have a lot of stick. So make your own stickers. I will also say that this is phenomenal for working with your um, scrapbooking because you can make your own stickers. Your own handmade, des hand designed stickers. And I will say, I have a new scrapbook program that I am releasing probably tomorrow, and I'm super excited about it. I know that I have scrapbooking I need to get caught up on. I used to run a scrapbook club, and of course, when the whole pandemic started, that kind of went by the wayside. So I've been working to develop this for a little while, and it's actually a collaborative effort 
Um, so there's two of us in the U.S. and two in uh, Canada, and we are friends, demonstrator friends, and we are collaborating together, which means you get designs from all of us, and, uh, but we're all using the same supplies, so you get just tons of ideas. I'm super excited about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, this navy twine is working out to be just a, a lovely little um, embellishment, little extra, because I think that what makes it really work is that it is so different from everything else, it provides a great contrast. So that what we end up with is something that's a little bit unexpected. Also, twine is just by nature, it's more casual. So that if we were adding this ribbon, which, you know, we could do this because we've got kind of this glamorous card here, but I think the twine is that unexpected element. And I think it just keeps it from being too, too formal because this, um, um, this foil sheet and this um, lacy die cut are a little bit that direction. Hey, Shannon, I'm so glad you're here. Shannon, you were at the event where we were first um, featuring this um, vine design. So you can see how I just have not been able to put it down. I just keep on doing more and more um, designing with it. And I will also mention, these are the cards that I was casing, and these are for my top five uh, team members that will be celebrating tonight. But we'll also be stamping tonight um, on my team meeting and some other things on Zoom. If you're interested in seeing what it's like to be part of my team, no obligation at all. I would love to send you my Zoom link, and you can join us for free tonight. Uh, my Zoom meeting for my team members is a monthly gathering online. Uh, via Zoom, and it is uh, free to all my team. If they want to order a make and take packet, they can, um, because we do have stamping projects each month. But that is totally, um, that's totally optional, and we do door prizes, we do celebrations, we, we have a lot of fun. And um, oh, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. So it, I didn't even think about these two, I just ended up doing portrait, this first one we did, landscape and I really like them all. I honestly couldn't tell you which is my favorite because I think they all have their elements of beauty and I'm just super happy with them. So I will um, be posting these on my blog. No inspiration sheet necessary. There's not even any um, anything to measure. You know, this is our standard five and a quarter by four piece of designer series paper and then you know, we just did the die. We stamped um, our greetings and held up the the um, the circle dies to see which one fit, and that was it. I mean, quick, easy, done. But look at the elegance and look at the beauty. I think they're really special. Oh, you know what? I was to do one more thing before I sign off. Let's do a little bit of these flowers on the inside. So I think that. Let's just pop these open and let's see how we can, let's see if we can, oh yeah, I think that will be cute. Super cute. I like it. See how that carries that, just that little flower image to the inside. We're going to do it here as well. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies. I know everybody's going to be heading out as I'm signing off, and you are too. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to come back on Thursday for simple and stepped up stamping. Today's Teach Me Tuesday was all about the adhesive sheets. I hope that you will consider adding them to your orders. If you have not already, I think it's definitely something that will make your life simpler and I'm all for that. Boom, done. And I hope that you will consider adding Vine Design to your order as well. Remember that if you uh, want to join uh, or register for my online class this month, my class by mail,
It um, features Vine Design. You can get an extra 10% off the bundle price when you add it to this class here. And these are the cards we'll be making with Vine Design. Look at there, there's my circle right there. And there is the way that you register for that. Um, you do get half a pack of the hydrangea paper. You get all the supplies to make these eight cards. You get three of the sponge daubers because we'll be using them. You get a full package of these lovely pastel um, pearls, which you can see mine have been used rather heavily. And on this class, we're going to be learning how to use this pearl sheets. Uh, I love them and you can see that sometimes on some of these cards I used them raw. Others uh, we added some color and we're going to be using those sponge daubers to add color and really make that uh, pearl sheet. Um, it's almost like you've added Wink of Stella to the whole piece. It's really really lovely and again your adhesive sheets make quick work of that. So that is my vine design. You can see that I've just been kind of going crazy with vine design, doing lots and lots of cards with vine design. I think it's just a treasure and something that you definitely want to add to your order. And, um, and I think that these uh, foil sheets are also a great one. Okay, some of y'all are on here that I will be, whoopsie, seeing you tonight. What happened? Okay. Um, I will be seeing some of you tonight uh, because you're part of my team and you're already registered to, to come to my meeting or you've just, uh, you're just going to grab the link. If you are interested in seeing what we do at my team meeting, uh, just shoot me a little message on here. Leave a comment or send me a private message and I will um, send you the Zoom link. Wow, this is like the shaggy dog. I think I need to go get a haircut. I can't see out of my bangs. <laughs> okay, I will see you Thursday and uh, take care and God bless.